Hi, I'm Sarah Jane from Natural Heating and today I'm going to do another stove review video, this time on the Arada Hamlet range of stoves. Now, these stoves are made by a company down in Axminster, so they are UK manufactured and they offer quite a number of different models that cover a good range of sizes. Um, the Hamlet range is a little budget entry level range of stoves, but probably the best value for money entry level British made stoves that you get for what you can buy. Um, there are several different models, starting at a little four kilowatt, then a five compact, a five, a wide five, a five inset, and a seven. Now the five and the five wide and the seven are actually the same size. It's different size bricks in the inside to give you different output. Oh, and they do a seven inset. Same as the five wide versus the seven size, it's just different brick sizes. But we take a look at most of them today and I'm actually going to light up and burn this one behind me, which is a Solution 5. So we take a closer look, shall we? Alright, so I've got everything ready that I need for tonight's burn session. I've got kindling, I've got my tape measure, my fire lighters, famous blowtorch, my ash tool, a screwdriver. I spent an hour and a half looking for this screwdriver. I'm only kidding. Um, I spent about 20 minutes right enough because I put it down somewhere and couldn't find it and I needed the Torx bit. Anyway. Um, and I've got some kiln dried logs. Uh, and coffee. Because I can't do this without coffee. Good coffee. Not Starbucks coffee. It's just a rubbish cup because I like it. Anyway, here we go. Inside we have what we call a locomotive grate. I haven't seen one of them in a while. And a locomotive grate means it moves back and forward. So I've got my tool, which comes with this stove, which doubles up for both ash pan removal. And we've got a decent sized ash pan in there. And it also riddles the bars in here via this um, at the side so i'm trying to do this backwards with the wrong hand i'm holding the phone in my right and i use my left so you turn that round Ooh, wrong hand and you'll see the bars are moving back and forward so it sugars the ash through and you really mainly use that for smokeless fuel you don't need it for wood now the unusual thing with this stove is all these bars let's just now i've done it haven't I? All these bars are individual, so spare parts, these are really inexpensive and easy to replace. But they literally just lift and drop in one at a time, so you don't have to buy a whole set. Off the top of my head, I think they're about 14, 15 quid each, something like that. But you can replace them one at a time as needed if you need to. Um, these stoves are 550ml high with the Hamlet Solution 5 and the 5 wide. The wider is your more landscape version. So the body width on this, the actual physical body width is just over 400. <laughs> this is the problem with being left-handed. They don't make left-handed tape measures. They only make right-handed tape measures. I complain. So, I hate tape measures because they're always back to front. Because when you're left-handed, for me to actually video it, my hand's on the wrong side of the tape measure. I need them the other way around because all my measurements are upside That's down. That's why the best measuring tape is this. And from my th finger to my thumb, without it being too far stretched, is six inches, which is 150 mil. So... It's impossible. Don't be left-handed. Everything is so blinking awkward. Right, okay. One-handed. Six inches. You see? So that's my tape measure. So basically, if I need to know how anything big anything is, you put two, of it, two hands together and it's 12 inches or a gap about the same in between and it's 18 and 150 mil, 300 mil, 450 mil, or even half of that, it's pretty easy to work out what I need to work out without a tape measure. So more often than not, I just don't use one. Anyway, um, what can we tell you about these? We can tell you that the handles do get hot, um, but they do do another handle. So this handle is quite short. And for people that are elderly or don't want to use a glove, because you know, that handle just is a bit 
Okay, so the Hamlet Solutions are one of our go-to ranges for entry-level stoves because they are very good build quality for what you get for your money. Spares aren't too expensive. Um, most of them are usually on a 5-inch flue system. They're DEFRA approved for smoke zones. They're made in the UK. A lot of people want a stove that's made in the UK. There's a good selling point. Um, they're well put together. It's a 10-year manufacturer's warranty against um, defects in manufacturing. That doesn't cover things like your glass, your ropes, your lining panels. They're consumable parts. And it doesn't cover abuse. People mixing wood and smoke was fueled together and overfiring it and burning it too hot. Because if you warp it all, it's your fault. That's misuse. It's manufacturing defects, like if you had a bad seam and it leaked or it was squinty and it wasn't right or... Do you know what? Manufacturing defects and problems with good brands aid stoves are really rare. I hardly ever get any problems. So, um, I don't think I've ever had any issues on Hamlet. I've sold hundreds of Hamlets, literally hundreds of Hamlets. I don't think I've ever had a warranty issue ever on a Hamlet. So, you know, they're pretty damn good at that point. We sell a lot of them to builders and developers, putting them into new builds. And we sell a lot of them to people that want new entry-level stoves. Um, or good value for stoves that give you a lot of heat output for the money. Their parts are cheap-ish. Yeah, I'd say they're cheap, especially because you can buy things like the um, great bars individually. They're all multi-fuel, so they all have the ability to burn wood or smokeless fuel. Um, Arada are very good for spare parts. They keep spare parts for stuff that goes back years and years and years and years. So it's not like you're buying some Chinese import and you're going to turn around in three or four years time and find out you can't get a grey or you can't get this or you can't get that. And um, Arada typically have everything in stock. If they haven't, there's quite a short waiting time to get things done. Hell, if you even want it, you can have it in lime green or barbie pink. They will paint them whatever colour typically they want, special order. They've got quite a large array of orders. I tend to stick to black. I'm not one for pink stoves or green stoves. And, you know, black is so easy to touch up. Grey is quite nice. I like a grey stove because the dust doesn't show on a grey stove and it always looks clean and tidy. Um... Black takes a bit of polish, but it's always easy to polish and do up. I'm not a fan of coloured stoves. I'm never going to be a fan of coloured stoves. Um, so I've got black and grey ones in here. I have had some coloured ones. We've had white. We've had some navy blue. The navy blue ones are lovely. It sounds grim, but navy blue is actually quite a soft colour. Um, other than the navy blue and... Uh, other than the navy blue and the um, black and grey, I'm really just going to stick at that. We had a red stove ordered for somebody at one point, and it was a really kind of funny colour red. And I only do red, I only do coloured stoves to special order. So if you're going to order a, a coloured stove, you're paying a big deposit up front because it's not going back. If you don't like the colour, it's tough because you ordered it, so you're stuck with it. And this man ordered the stove, and it came in, and it almost looked like metallic pinky red and it really wasn't pretty. Um, I've got a funny feeling he might actually be sprayed himself but that's a whole another story. So we'll light this little beast up and see what she does and show you what she's up to. So I'm going to start off with a couple of small kiln dried logs. These are standard kiln dried logs that are birch. I like birch for testing these days because it's a really thing to take. should have shown you how big this fire box is. And it's difficult to do with one hand. And an upside down tape measure. Can somebody send me a left hand tape measure? Honestly. Right, okay. So that firebox is wider than 12. I can't even measure it with one hand. Sorry. And certainly not backwards. It's wider than 12 inches because these logs are 10 inches. Ah. Oh. See what a pickle I get into. It is really not easy doing these videos. And all I get is, when you're doing the next one, these logs are 10 inches long overall length. So, there's plenty of space to the side. It's not a tight firebox. There's loads of room in there. You could get 12s in there, but 8s and 10s are typically your standard size from your wood merchant or that people typically cut to. I cut my own kindling. Um... So I'm going to put a good stack of kindling in there to get us going. 
I will put a fire lighter, just the one, in there. And some kindling on top. And a couple of extra bits for luck. Not that we need that. And the one-handed gas torch. Just to get lit. And away she goes. So, two air controls on this stove. One at the bottom. One at the top. Now, this here is your DEFRA screw. And the DEFRA screw is for the air vent. So at the moment, this air vent is fully open. And that is the air vent shut. Now that air vent is probably about 30%, I would guess, open, maybe even a bit more than that. No, nah, probably about 30%. Um, we'll show you what that does later, but that's what makes it DEFRA approved for smokeless zone. So basically, the air there's an air limiter that stops the user burning it too low to burn it cleaner and faster and produce less carbon and deposits. So, there you go. Now, what we really like about this stove is it. The things we really like about this stove is it suits almost everybody. So, if you're selling a house or buying a house, it's a good little stove to have both because it's inexpensive, but because it suits a great multitude of people and that's why a developer likes it. Our developers tend to like it. Now, if you've got a house and you're putting that house up for sale and you put in something really, really modern, there's a lot of people aren't gonna like it. And likewise, if you put in something really, really traditional, they're not gonna like it. It's trying to appeal to the broadest range of people possible. So this is not a modern stove and it's not a traditional stove. It's what I'd call classical. Um, and it's one of the few classical ones we've got. So it's not square, it's not round, it's got a bit of a curve, it's got a bit of softness to it, but it's also got a bit of character to it. So it's kind of going to stand the test of time and not really going to date in terms of looks. And value wise, it's decent. It's not as heavy as your clocks. It's not as heavy as your Hetas, but then again, it's not the price tag of your Pret Clocks or your Hetas at either. It's a good, good chunk of money left, uh, less. So value for money, it's an incredible value for money for those in starter homes or selling them on or... It's just a good all-rounder little stove. Um, and what it lacks in some areas, it makes up for 10 times over in others. So really, it's one of our most popular starter units that we do. Okay, so I've got my top and bottom air vents open. My door is slightly ajar to get my draft pulling and heat my chimney up. And it's been horrid out there tonight. It's probably quite negative air pressure because we've been, it's been chucking it down my rain while I've been in here. So I'm in no great rush to go home. Visible glass on this unit, on the Hamlet Solution 5, is 275 millimeters wide by about 270 millimeters high for visible viewing area. You see what I mean about that delicate curve to the door. It's not square, it's not sharp, it's just soft. This beveled edge is nice. Um, the beveled edges are nice. It's still a steel compact body. The design is all in the door. They are vermiculite lined. Vermiculite, as you probably already know, is a volcanic material that is insulated to 1200 degrees centigrade to push all the heat forward. I'd normally leave that a little bit longer. I'm rushing it tonight because I've not got the hugest amount of time to get this video done. It's already sold and going out tomorrow and we're already about seven o'clock tonight and it's got to be out cold, done and back off lit display for the morning. I've burnt these plenty of times before. I've just not done video on them. We'll have a closer look at them, but it pulls away nicely because there's like a, a letterbox style baffle on the top that pulls the air nicely, but we'll look at one of the ones that isn't lit in a bit. So the door handles are quite firm and they do get hot. Now, they do send a cool glove. It's a funny looking glove actually, but they're quite clever. So you do get a 
glove with Vicky much as the stove. Typically it's sealed out of pack yeah, and I can't open it with one hand unless I get my knife out. Um, it's kind of like pimply type stuff on it but it's heat proof so it doesn't get hot but it's like a, a knitted mitten. Um, so it's much easier to use than a regular type gauntlet. You need your hand around it but these handles for people with bad hands they're short and they're not great. They're all right, but they're not great. Now you can upgrade this. They do a heat proof handle, which is much longer. We'll go and look at one in a second. Um, the, heat, the heat proof handle is about 60 pounds. It's not cheap, but it doesn't get hot. So that is a huge bonus and it's worth the investment or maybe you can get one for Christmas. Ask Santa nicely. Maybe you'll get a door handle and not a lump of coal. So nice, pretty glass on it. Already, we've only been three minutes into the start of this video, three, four minutes, and I can feel the heat coming through that glass already. It's nice and quick. The top and bottom air vent is open and it's pulling away nicely. It's a nice little thing. Want to see some right. more? While that's heating up, we'll take a look at the Hamlet Solution 5 wide. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Hamlet Solution 5 wide and this is the heat proof door handle. Now look at the difference in my hand with that handle. There's loads of room, it's easy to grip, it doesn't get hot and um, this is the optional extra which they're about 60 quid. We keep them in stock so if MD wants to mail order one or they want to buy a stove and buy an optional handle, we I've got the money if, if anybody ever wants to walk in the door and pick one up. But that just screws on. So you unscrew one handle and screw this one on and that's what it does. So this is the five wide, which has got a great big firebox in it. And it's a really popular model because of the size of the glass. Um, it's still classed as a five kilowatt because it's got these enormous bricks in the inside. Now that is 380 wide internal firebox and externally that stove is a 490 mil across the body so it's a good three inches wider than the smaller five kilowatts but if you look at the thickness of these bricks they're huge they're about 50 mil thick they're really really thick for vermiculite now that gives it really good insulate properties and also means it throws the heat forward into the room quick. Mm -hmm. It gives you a great big fire picture. So you don't burn much so much fuel because a lot of the firebox is taken up with bricks. It throws the heat out well and it gives you a really nice big fire picture. And it looks tiny in here because it's up on a shelf, but when it's in your room in your house, it really is quite a big stove. Um, where people have got ex-council house, houses for example that are around about 1940s 1950s built most of those will knock out to around about 800 900 millimeter wide and this is a really good sized big beast it's not a beast it's a, it's a big chunk of a stove that really looks like it fills the space and commands the space that it's in without being overbearing um but yet gives the user plenty of capacity to not burn too much or to burn lots um, to get a good heat output. So you've got the scope to burn it at lower temperatures or higher temperatures. The only thing that kind of falls back with the Hamlets is they don't have a huge amount of air control, but that is something that you can work on. Now, while I've been showing you that Hamlet Solution 5 wide, as you can see, my fire has taken nicely on my Hamlet Solution 5. Um, I've been moving everything about using the tape measure and the coffee and go a little walk. So I've been moving loads of things, um, but this is the little on the solution four little dinky stove and that sat next to an echo apple pie so these are really cute nice and low 500 millimeters wide mm -hmm. guessing 320 ish wide 320 across the top yep um quite a good deep firebox still takes a good size log riddling bars just the same 
same parts as standard. Top and rear flow exit. Decent sized little firebox. This is the dinkiest, tiniest baby of the range. Nine inches deep. Internally. Probably about nine inches wide internally. But this is the tiny one. This is the teeny weeny weeny one. And actually, it's quite a big firebox for the size of it. You can get plenty of fuel in there and it's plenty of heat output. It's not an awful lot lower in terms of heat output than the five compact. Now, here's a five compact. Five compact is a good bit bigger. Do you see the difference between the little one to the left of your screen and this one here? It's quite substantially bigger. You are sitting at 550 on the compact, like you are the other two. It's just narrower in width. So we are 390 across the top. That means we'll be about 370 across the actual body. And the firebox size. I'm sorry, I can't do much about it with one hand. You are looking about nine inches deep by about 12 inches wide internally. It's still easy to take a 10 inch log. They're a good size little firebox. It's very similar to the standard five. It's just a little bit cheaper and a little bit narrower for small openings. From there, we can move on to the solution inset. And the solution inset actually fits into a hull. So, you see, so that fits into a standard 16 inch fireplace opening. Um, and the flues on these, flue collars on these for an inset fire are a bit of an awkward pain in the ass to fit because they're fixed, they're welded on. Fitters get round it, but they hate them because they're not easy to connect to because you have to kind of, you have to kind of lift the stove up and scoop it into the hall. Whereas when you've got a stove like the Charlton and Jim McKinsey with a collar like that that drops down inside the stove and connects from the inside, it's a lot easier to connect. Um, but saying that, the Hamlet solutions are a really good value for stove all the way around on all the models. They never give me any trouble. They never cause any hassle and they're good value for money. So see, this is the five kilowatt. So this is the five kilowatt inset, which has got a good big firebox and big liners in the inside. The seven is the same size as the five in the insert, and it's the same size as the five wide in the freestanding models. It's just the brick sizes that make a bit of a swizz when the seven kilowatt versions obviously need an air vent no matter what house you put them into and the seven kilowatts cost more than the five kilowatts but they're probably cheaper in materials because they've got less insulation in the inside and the body is just the same so i can't really work that one out it's what they do i'm presuming that the parts are more expensive to produce because they don't produce as many sevens as fives because let's face it most customers just don't want to put an air vent in if they don't have to. And the vast majority of people that put that we find put hamlets in are putting them into older houses and cottages. So they just don't need an air vent because the houses were built before 2008. So why wouldn't you? Especially if you're selling it or it's occasional use in a heat top up or you haven't got a lot of money. It's a good value all-rounder unit. It's not a cheap unit. It's not like buying some Chinese cheap thing off eBay. It's a decent value for money stove that you're always going to get parts for and runs really well and it'll never let you down and it's just going to keep plodding on. But it's just not the heavy, heavy build quality and the superior controls you get from hunters and clocks and that kind of thing but it's built to a budget for value for money is it's unbeatable it really is for value for money you want a good stove minimum money uk made a radar top of the tree every time that's how it is can't really contest that so this little five kilowatt is burning nice and this it's not the littlest five kilowatt because it's the solution five so it's kind of mid-size so this stove is heating up. The handle here is starting to get hot. 
this bit isn't yet but it will um it's not been on for very long the heat's rattling out the front nicely heats up nice and quick there's a slight flush of back smoke there but to be honest that's because my chimney hasn't heated up and it's peddling down the rain outside so you shouldn't open a stove door when there is half burnt fuel in there you should be reloading on ember bed but i want to put a log on top and you'll see there's absolutely no spillage now it was a two second actually i am being a complete idiot because i haven't even got that top air vent fully open so no wonder it's not playing it's not even on full air it was shut down right i obviously need more coffee right okay it's getting late on in the day and I've already done more than 12 hours here today. Right, okay, so fresh log, full primary and secondary air. It's not even quite had long enough to come up to full temperature, but it's pretty much there, I'd say, not far off it. Maybe not the body shell. It'll start smoking that paint on and in the next few minutes. Yeah, I can see that bit there. Do you see that bit there? That's the paint starting to go tacky where it's warming up um, because it's not baked the paint on yet but it's heating up nicely and the fuel is catching nice and quick there we go so since that log is catching up and we are getting up to temperature I'm going to shut the lower primary air vent because you don't need the primary air vent once your stove is letting go in and heating up nicely. You should just be running on the secondary, which is bringing the air in down through the glass to keep the glass cleaner longer. And this stove's pulling away nicely and the bricks are nice and clean in the inside. So it's got enough heat in it to be clean burning with no smoke coming out the chimney. That'll be clear outside. I'd show you, but it's dark. So. We have bottom air control, which is shut. The glove, which is in the packet. And I'm going to get out to use that top air vent. There you go. There's my heat proof mitten thing, which are actually pretty good. I can get it on with one hand. So, there we go. That's it turned down. That's minimal here. Right, we're just going to sit and watch it for a little bit because what you will see is this is on minimal air and it's heated up. Look at this big hand thing. Look at me, my hands look massive. Feels massive as well. It's a bit floppy, but anyway, it does its job. It's just a glove. Um, it's just a great, great big glove. Um, I'm going to take it off because it feels a bit weird. Right, okay, so this air vent, which is partially locked open, is your top air control. The bottom one is already shut. But it's not windy out there tonight, so there's not lots of pool. And this is as low as that stove goes. Now, as the f there's two ways of burning a stove. There's two ways of controlling the heat in a stove. There's the burn speed. That's like how much throttle pedal you've got in your car. Um, some cars have got seven gears. And some cars have got three this is kind of like a three gear car. So there's not a huge amount of air control. So there's two ways of controlling your stove. There's the amount of air, which the air controls on this don't do very much. Um, or there's the amount of fuel you put in the door. Because why are you going to burn two lugs if you only need one lug? Well, you need to burn two lugs to start with so you've got a hot red ember bed. But there's no point in burning double the amount of fuel if you don't need it. So you put the volume of fuel in for the heat output you need out because two logs are going to burn as fast as one log. But let's say it's pulling a gale and you want to burn it down, you have to put less wood in it because there's not a lot of air control on this fire. Unless you take out the defra screw. Now you can hear it, there is a difference. There's not no difference, there is a difference. And although I'm showing this is a bad point, it's one of the best value money for stoves that you can buy. And you're buying British, and it is bloody good. But stoves all have their own personality. 
And like us, none of them are perfect. You have to find the one that fits you. And this is really the only thing that I don't like about this stove is it doesn't have as much air control as I would like. But for the money, you're honestly not going to get better made of value for money and for spare parts availability and cost. It is what it is and you just need to accept that. So full air. Minimal air. Takes about five seconds to burn the oxygen off in the firebox. But as you'll see, compared to a lot of the burn videos I've done, there's not a vast amount of air control. Well, in these stoves, there's what they call a DEFRA screw that I think I told you about earlier. And again, I shouldn't really be opening this door yet because I've got a full log in. So we shouldn't be opening this door yet anyway, but I'm going to anyhow because I want to show you what it's doing while it's burning. So we'll give it a few seconds just to evacuate those gases off. And there's no spill out that door, it's burning nice. Now, this here is a torch security bit and it's a T25. And this is what stops that air control going right down. I'm gonna probably get burn my fingers with the heat coming out the door because I can feel it being hot, hot, hot. Now, how far does this go? I think we need the glove. Ugh. I feel like the big flappy thing. Right, it's okay. Right, down there. We haven't lost it. Right. So taking that screw out means this air vent will shut right down. And that gives you a lot more heat control. The thing is, when you take the DEFRA screw out, you have to be fitting that on a six inch liner. So you can start off with five inch flue off the top of the stove, but the liner or the flue system up that chimney needs to be legally six inch diameter, okay? Because you need more air draw to take more gases away because you're producing more gases because you're burning at a lower temperature. So I'm gonna flip you back so you can see what this does. In fact, if I show you me and the fire at the same time, you get a better view, okay? Will that do? So, that's full air. I'm gonna shut the bottom air down because we don't need the bottom air. I opened it because I was opening the door on a half burnt fuel bed. I'm gonna try and put one handed this stupid big mitten back on. It works, it's not that stupid, but it feels, it feels massive. It is massive. So if you can see that air control, remember what it was like before, but it now goes loads further. So you'll see it's shutting down a lot more than it did. And it takes a good five or 10 seconds to shut off the air in the firebox. And that is on a full burn log. So that is quite a bit more air control, but you really should be burning it on a six inch flue or a six inch liner and not a five inch. It is a brilliant all round and stove in all the sizes. They really are extraordinarily good value for money. Um, <coughs> we thoroughly recommend them because they're, they just don't give us any problems. They look great. But your main thing for control is if you can put it on a six inch flue, then do, because you do get more air control. Um, don't put too many logs in it. Only put in the logs that you need because it doesn't matter if it's burning that little bit hotter, that little bit faster. But if you've put three or four logs in there and you really only need a hot ember bed plus one log, you are going to swelter because you can't just go, oh, I'm too hot, I'll turn it down a bit and then wait it out. <laughs> no, you're going to roast alive. So you'll be opening the windows and heating the street or... <laughs> It just takes a bit of getting in the right mindset about how much fuel to put in the door in a hamlet versus the air control. That's the truth of it. If you want a lot more air control, pay a bit more money, buy something else. But if it's your budget and you've only got the budget for the hamlet to spend, they are a bloody good buy. Just learn to use it. So if you're coming in here, we'll help you, we'll train you, we'll show you the differences about when to load a log, how many logs to put in, whether you're burning harder wood, whether you're burning softer wood, explain the differences. But you know what? These little stoves really can't be faulted. They're exceptionally good value for money. They're exceptionally good for performance. They burn lovely and clean. They do the job exactly as they say on the tin. They just don't have the extra frills and polish of some of the higher end units that have a lot better, more developed air control systems. 
It's not the cleanliness, it's just the actual physical top to bottom level of throttle. You just don't have the same throttle control. But yeah, they're worth your money any day of the week. Um, and I've not really got an awful lot more to say on these because it's not the sort of stove they would be fit freestanding against combustible walls. We'd really only fit them into fireplace openings um, because they've got huge distances to combustible requirements. They get really hot on the backs and the sides. They play, kick out plenty of heat, leave plenty of air gap around it inside a fireplace opening. It'll do you well, it chucks plenty of heat out. It's just not for freestanding against combustible walls, even with the heat shields on the back to reduce clearances. The clearance distances are still vast. There's better stoves to buy for that. Um, and I wouldn't be leading you to one of these. But for a general stove to go in a fireplace opening and you're upgrading from an old stove to a new one with a minimal budget, or you're moving up market from a cheap Chinese import, these are really good, honestly no problems here. I hope this has helped um, and as you see really pretty little fire and they do burn nice. It's just you, we need to learn how to control it um, and not to put too many logs on it or you're gonna cook. I hope that helps. It's a honest review, it's what they are, it doesn't put people off buying them because they really are a genuine little unit. Um, but we tell you the truth so you know what you're buying. And that's why lots of people come to visit us at Natural Heating. And we are always here to help you. And we keep all the different sizes and range in stock. So if you want to visit and take them away or fit it yourself or have your fitter fit it or have our guys fit it or... It's not a problem. None of it's a problem. You just want to come and visit? Of course you're welcome. There's always tea and coffee and always happy to help. Um... We can also ship these out by courier where they have to be. Some stoves are shop sale only. These ones you can buy for mail order. Um, and we're happy to help if you need to give me a call and discuss fireplace opening sizes and you're interested in buying one. I've got plenty of them. Um, and usually all the models across the Hamlet range. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video review. And um, we'll see you again soon. Right, well, this has been burning about another 45 minutes or so since I left it, and I'm just about to go home for the night. But what I'm going to do, because it's still burning, is just show you what it's doing before I leave. So, with the surface that would burn off, you'll see it is quite a nice rolling flame. Now, that is with the air totally shut down. If you had that DEFRA screw in, that air vent would be halfway, at least a third, open, to your minimum burn. It takes over just nice as long as you don't put too much wood in it. You just don't have lots of variance in air control. You don't see much happening. It's therefore all about how many logs you put in it. Use the glove. I'm going home. See, not a lot of variance, but it's steady burning. It's not running away with itself. It's just a nice plurry all rounder. <laughs>